and the credit, the only question being, what will that debit be? So pay cash for miscellaneous expense. So uh, we don't know what miscellaneous expense is, and obviously in real life we would like to categorize things as much as possible, but uh, to keep this problem simplified, we're going to limit the amount of expenses. Now where are the expenses? We have assets, and then we have liabilities, then we have equity, and we have revenue, and then we have expenses down here. So expenses are at the bottom, and uh, we're going to put miscellaneous expense at the bottom in this case. So here we have miscellaneous expense. Expenses basically are debit balance accounts and they only go up. They're basically only going to be debited except for rare cases that we'll get into at a later time. So we're always going to debit an expense because they always are debit balance accounts and they go up. We knew we we're going to debit it because we credited cash. So let's copy this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in cell C11. So there's C11. You see that one in C11. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. And there we have that. So now we can go ahead and post this out. So we're gonna post this to the general ledger. This is called posting the general journal to the general ledger. And we're looking for miscellaneous expense. That's gonna be way over here. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller like so. And we're gonna go way over to the end. Miscellaneous expense is way on the end. And it's down here. It's gonna be in the debit. So it's in column AM 21. Now, why is it AM? Because once you get past column Z, then it starts at AA, AB, AC, blah, blah back to AM. So that's how the numbering system is going to work. So we're on AM 21. I'm going to say equals and I'm going to hold down the left arrow. I'm going to hold it down until I just hit the wall over here and then I'm going to go find that 400 debit. We're recording this 400 for miscellaneous expense in the general ledger for miscellaneous expense. I'm going to hit enter and that puts me back over here and we went from zero up in the debit direction to 400. And we can see that 400 then on the trial balance. It should record automatically over here. There's the 400 there. Put us out of balance. It made net income go down. So this is the first time net income is affected, meaning we have revenue minus expenses. There is no revenue and we only have expenses. Therefore, we have basically a loss in this case of 400. All right, so then the cash uh, is gonna be the other side of that. So cash we know is right here. So nice and handy. We can see that in cell P11. So we're going to say equals in P11 and scroll over here to and notice I'm using the arrows now and I'm pointing to the cash credit in cell E12. When we hit enter, because this is a credit and cash is a debit balance account, they're the opposite. Therefore, it goes down from 29.2 to 28.8. All right, so I'm going to go back, see the next transaction. I'm going to make this a little bit larger once again. And we are now on, uh, I'm going to skip a line on five. 13. So 513 then says vendor uh, paid vendor for part of the debt incurred in the prior month recorded as accounts payable. Okay, so we paid the vendor. So once again, is cash affected? That's going to be the question. And in this case, it is. It doesn't say cash this time, but we paid something and I'm assuming we paid it with cash. Now cash does include checks and whatnot. So checks are part of cash for this problem. So cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it as what it is. Cash is a debit represented by the fact that it doesn't have brackets. So we're going to credit it because that's the opposite thing to it in order to make it go down. So I'm going to right click, copy that. Here's the date line. I'm going to put my cursor under that in cell C15 because the credits go on the bottom. I'm going to right click, I'm going to paste it one, two, three, values only. I'm going to go in the credit column on the general uh, journal worksheet and put a negative to represent the credit and the amount will be for 500 when we hit enter the format of the cell will change it to have brackets i'm gonna if we credit something we're also gonna have to debit something so i'm gonna be up here in cell c14 and put the 500 in there as well so there's the debit side there's the credit side the only thing we don't know at this time is what the credit account will be and we recorded services provided but for which cash had uh, I'm sorry we're up here paid vendor for part of debt incurred so we paid the vendor but we didn't get anything today we got something sometime in the past so we have an IOU basically out there to our vendor uh, the account that represents an IOU is a liability it's called accounts payable so accounts payable represents the money that we owe to somebody else in this case $800 we're paying 500 of it we see that it has a credit balance we're paying it off therefore it should go down because we don't owe it anymore 
We make something go down by doing the opposite thing to it as what it is. That's a credit represented by the brackets. We already know that we're going to debit it because we credited cash. That makes sense. That will make it go down because it's the opposite of what it is. I'm going to go ahead and copy the accounts payable. Put that on the top of this journal entry. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. All right, so we're going to post this out. So I'm going to scroll over here a little bit so we can see more of our screen. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller like so. And then let's post this out. So we're going to look for accounts payable. So accounts payable is over here. We're going to be in the debit side in this case. So I'm in cell AA9. So AA9, I'm going to say equals. I'm going to take my cursor and point to the 500. And then when we hit enter, the 800 will go down by 500 to the 300. That 300 then will also be over here on the accounts payable. For some reason, it's the same as the receivable. That's just a coincidence. <laughs> but there's the 300 and we are out of balance by 500 now. So now we're gonna post the cash side of it. So if we go to the GL and cash and we go down here to the uh, cell O12, I'm sorry, we're gonna go down to P12. We're gonna post it as a credit because it's in the credit column. We're gonna say equals and then I'm just gonna point to that cash number and it has E15 in it. Then when we hit enter, it will go from 28.8 down to 28.3 because it's a debit balance and we did the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. All right, let's make this a little bit larger once again and keep posting these out. We're gonna go down to the next transaction, which happens to be in this case on 515. So on 515, we have recorded services provided, but for which cash has not yet been received. Okay, so we've seen that before, I believe. So we did, we've recorded services, but cash, well, we haven't done that yet. Anyway, so we did work, but we didn't get money yet. So then the, re the question again is, is cash affected? And in this case, we're gonna say no, we, we recorded work, we did work, but we have not yet received cash. So we did work, we're gonna send out the invoice basically saying, hey, we did work, pay us but we haven't got the cash yet. So what did we get instead? We got kind of an IOU. When we do the work, we say we earned the work, people owe us money. So the asset that we have is an asset in this case. It basically means that it's an IOU. We did the work, people owe us money at, as of the time the work is done. And we can see that the uh, IOU account, the account receivable has a debit balance. We need to make it go up. People owe us more money. So I'm going to go ahead and debit that, do the same thing to it, just like if we got paid with cash, we're getting paid with an IOU in this case. So I'm going to right click, copy that, I'm going to put that on the top, right click and paste it, one, two, three. So that's going to be for the amount of, in this case, seven, five. If we debit something, we will also have to credit something. So I'm going to be over here in column in cell E18, E18, I'm going to put a negative. 7500 and once we hit enter that will put the brackets around it because of the formatting of the cell and now we just need to know what that credit account will be and the credit will be in this case finally revenue we earned the revenue so basically anytime we do work we earn revenue revenue only goes up so whether we get paid cash or not when we do work under an accrual basis we will record an increase in revenue Revenue has a credit balance. So revenue has a credit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another credit. Uh, revenue will always go up for the most part. If we do work, revenue will go up. Net income can go down, but revenue generally just goes up. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click that. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna put our cursor on C18, right click and paste it one, two, three, just the values only. So then we're going to go back over here and we're going to make this a little bit smaller again and see if we can post this out. So we're going to go to the receivables account. So here we have receivables in cell S10. We're posting this receivable in cell S10 under the accounts receivable general ledger. This is called posting to the general ledger. I'm going to say equals, going to point to that 75 and that 300 once we hit enter will go up to seven eight by the seven five that we have now posted into the account receivable. Then we're gonna go to the revenue. That's gonna be the blue accounts. So I'm gonna go over here a little bit further to the blue over here. Here's the uh, the revenue account. So I'm in cell AF19, AF19. So remember it goes to Z and then goes AA, AB and whatnot. 
we're going to say equals in the cell. I'm going to hold down the left arrow instead of using the mouse this time. I'm just going to hold down the left arrow until I hit the wall. And then I'm going to go to that last entry that I'm in and I'm looking for the revenue. And I'm just going to go to that cell, uh, which is E18. And then go ahead and hit enter and it will make the account go from zero up in the credit direction to 75. Where else will we see that 75? We see it on the trial balance. So there it is on the trial balance right here. And now that's revenue. Revenue went up. So what happened to net income? We can see it right here on our trial balance. The revenue of the 75 minus the expense of the 400 means we have income of 71. Now that 71 is income. It's not a loss, even though it has brackets around it and Excel sees that as a negative number. We see it in terms of debits and credits as the credits are beating the debits. Therefore, we have income of 7,001 in this case as of this time. All right, so I'm gonna make this a little bit larger once again. We're gonna go down to the next item, which happens to be in this case, 517, where it says that cash received from clients for revenue earned during this month. All right, so we did work. And in this case, what we're trying to say there is we did work and we got money in the same time period or within the same month. And so uh, we want to record the, the revenue and the cash in this time period at this time. So first question, is cash affected? Yeah, in this case, cash is affected because it says we received cash. Cash is going up, cash is the debit balance. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm gonna right click, gonna copy that, I'm gonna put that on the top. So I'm in cell C20, right click, paste it, one, two, three. Then we're gonna put that in the debit column. I'm in this cell here, so the amount will be seven, one. Then we need to credit something for seven, one, because we have to have an equal number of debits and credits with every journal entry. So I'm gonna put a negative to represent the credit of seven, one. And when we hit enter, that'll put brackets around it. You will need to put the, the negative sign in this type of Excel worksheet in order for the formulas to work in the most efficient way. Then the only question is, what should this account be? So uh, cash received for revenue earned. So we earned revenue. So why did people pay us cash? Because we earned revenue. We earned it in this time period, in this case. We can see the revenue account is always going to be in order. Assets, then liabilities, then equity, then revenue. Revenue has a credit balance. It only goes up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is. Therefore, we're going to make another credit. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this in C21. Right click, paste it, one, two, three. Note we already knew we were going to credit it because we debited cash. All right, so then we're going to post this out. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller again so we can see some more of the general ledger. This is the general journal, which we will now post to the general ledger which will then automatically update the trial balance. All right, so we're gonna go over here to cell 013 and we're gonna say equals. I'm gonna to point to the cash number there. And once we hit enter, the 283 will go up in the debit direction to uh, 35.4. We are now, of course, out of balance by the 7.1 until we record the credit. We're out of balance here, we're out of balance here and then we will go over to the revenue so revenue is way over here remember it's, it's in terms of assets then liabilities then equity and then revenue is down here revenue is always going to be a credit so i'm in the credit column i'm in cell af 20 in this case i'm going to hit equals and this time i'm going to hold down that left arrow again i'm just going to hold it down and note the number changes every time i go that's fine until i find the one that i want which is that credit of seven one then I'm going to hit enter and it takes the revenue account from 75 up to 146 because we did the same thing to it as what it is. We can see that 146 on the trial balance as well. What's the effect on net income? Well, net income went up. So now net income is 142, which is that 146 revenue, what we earned less the miscellaneous expense of 400 at this time. All right, next transaction, I'm gonna make this a little bit larger on the task bar down here, and we're back to 100%. Gonna go down to 520, where we have purchase of supplies on account, uh, no cash is paid. So, is cash affected? And the, and the answer is no, we purchased it on account. So, many times if a book says it says we purchased it on account, we gotta kinda know the terminology. Obviously here, we also said that the cash wasn't paid. So you can kinda think of that as we 
purchased it maybe similar to being on a credit card or something like that. We didn't pay cash. We have an IOU in the future. Uh, if you see the terminology of on account, it's probably going to mean I, uh, accounts receivable or accounts payable. 